All right, so um, I've already unscrewed the back plastic piece, and I've unscrewed the digitizer. There's um, two machine screws on each side, right here and right here, four plastic screws up top, and five plastic screws down the bottom. Uh, the second generation Cintiqs have them nicely marked with little circles around them, uh, so that you know that they are for before you put the plastic on. So when you put it back together, See how there's a couple holes here and here that do not have little engraved circles? Those you don't put a screw in because that's where the plastic cover is going to screw back into it. Like there, there, that corner, that corner. They're all right next to the ones where this metal is mounted directly to it. And don't forget to screw back in the uh, display cord when you're putting it back together. All right, so we're popping it off. The sec again, the second generation model is very well designed. All the cords drop through so you don't have to unpull any cords through like on the first gens they're obnoxious the only time you have to pull a cord through is when you take off the plastic back you have to pull the dis display cord through all right so this is the digitizer board over here uh, in order to unplug it i usually pull out this component for a moment and then we will pop it all off while it's unplugged so as long as it's not powered on, it's I haven't damaged anything. I've done that a few times, but um, try to make sure it's unplugged. All right, I like to crease back these so that it's uh, well out of the way. Plastic will snap back once you put it back later. It's not a big deal. All right, so there's the USB plug here. Plug going to the uh, side buttons, the digitizer. This goes to the main board and powers. I guess the board 12 volts of power. And you got four ribbon cables. You're going to want to pull back the tabs. I don't know if they're called ribbon cables or flat cables or whatever their real name is. And you got four screws on the digitizer board that we can uh, unzip real quick with Phillips number two. Just go through that. These I'm just going to place off to the side because these are going to go right back in, in a moment. One, two. This is just testing. I'm not going to do the soldering repair because I've already actually done that. Didn't think of doing the video until a little late, but oh well. Have to produce that on a future job. On this one, I actually, this is the board that I originally tried to repair when I wasn't sure what I was doing. I replaced the entire Wacom chip. That was just a waste of time. But again, the component that you're actually replacing is that actually has a problem is this little tiny little tiny component right there it's got six pins going to it and the way that you can test it is right across this little capacitor here you'll be able to get 30 kilo ohms and across the other little capacitor you'll get about one mega ohm and that means if you get either of those two values or both of those two values more likely it means that the chip here has died and you have to replace it. That's literally all you have to do to make it so that your thing works again. Um, and all you need to replace that really is, is a soldering iron and a soldering wick and a little bit of solder. It doesn't take a lot. Um, I mean, I, I use a hot air gun and a small nozzle to get it off, but to put, put on the new chip, I only use a soldering gun and a little bit of a soldering wick to clean up the area afterwards. So it's pretty, it's pretty easy to repair. And as you can see, it doesn't exactly look super pretty because like I did a whole bunch of unnecessary stuff here, but uh, this one worked. Anyway, popping this back together, putting this in. Again, we're just testing this out because this is a repair job for somebody. And. Um, there we go. I'm going to screw these in and probably fast forward through this part. It's good to screw it in because it gives grounding to the board and don't want anything to be a reason why it doesn't show up as working. Once I put it back together, I test to make sure that the component was in byte by making sure that it is connected to certain certain other 
pieces of the board as it is six spots that it should connect to. One of the pins connects to power, one of the pins connects to ground, and then I just kind of follow the traces to where the other two pins connect to make sure that I actually soldered the contacts in sufficiently so that the pin is connected to the board. Um, so that when I put it together like I'm doing now, I'm not going to fry other components because I've improperly done that. There we go. Got to kind of wiggle these in a little bit. This can kind of be tough. But you're all gonna, you're gonna have a thin blue line left over. And once you put it in, the black line should line up with where it's gonna be closing. You want to clamp down. Okay, it might not be in time. Okay, never mind. It is. Shouldn't be using much force to do this. So those four are in, those are important ones. Those go to the digitizer backing, which is a bunch of crisscross lines, which detect when power is sent, fed back through the pen to the machine. This wide component here literally just is a bunch of input buttons. One of those input buttons and the slider control. This is the USB, four pins, the data and the power on the ground, well, two data and a power on the ground, and this is to the main board, which supplies an alternative power source, because this actually runs off of 12 volts, or most of it runs off of 12 volts, and the USB only supplies 5 volts, so putting them together, slapping that on, I'm not going to put the case on for testing it, um, just going to just Plug it in, uh, plug that in, and make sure there's actually two different kinds of pens. I have my case of pens over here. There's two kinds of pens. One of them, I've gotten one because I didn't need to. So you may notice there's, see how they each say Wacom up here? One of the pens does not say it also on the back. So this pen only says Wacom on one side. That is a first generation DTK pen. Doesn't work on the Simplex. That only works on the Intuos boards. The dual sided Wacom pen is a DTK type pen that you do need, or I guess it's a PTK, whatever it is, where it's got the two Wacom worded on both sides. That's the one that you need to test out a digitizer. If you try it with that one, I think it might tell you this pen's incompatible or whatever, but um, it's better just to make sure you have the right kind of pen. So I'm just going to plug it in real quick. My lap, um, desktop over here. Actually, we do not need to get the power on for me. Got to get a, I've got a, quite a few of these 12 volt, 6 amp, 4 pin power cords. I got them from China for about 11 bucks. I don't buy them from Wacom for like 40 bucks. I got right there. Wait a week and a half from China. All right, so we got that in. Again, this is my test model, so the front of the screen doesn't really have to look that great because I did a really shitty job repairing it. I'm just going to put it on the side, flip the pen over, and boop, this pen, oops, oh, that's the bad pen. Derp, 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 derp. Well, I was right, it does say this pen is not compatible with the Steam Tank, so you must use a compatible pen. And I put the compatible pen over here, boom. Looks like Digitizer has been repaired. We are good to go. This is going to ship back today. But a way that you can tell really quickly, I don't know if you were able to see that, is that right up here is the status light. I can't see where my fingers are. There. Right up here is the status light. And uh, I just make sure that that status light is blinking when I'm tapping it. Most of the time I don't actually flip it over. I'll just test it from the underside. And I'll watch over here to see if I see the blue light. And if I see the blue light, 
That means, oops, right over there. I'll just check to see if the blue light's blinking. And if it is, we're good. I have fixed it. And we can ship it out. So this one's all set. That's uh, that would be the digitized repair in a nutshell. Uh, if anybody has any questions, comment below. You know, I think I'm going to put this on YouTube. Hope you're having a wonderful day. If anybody has any piece of electronics that they want repaired, I can do diagnostics and, you know, whatever. Send me the, send me the thing and I'll ship it back and probably be able to fix it. Have a good one.